Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Here's the wheels after I painted them with some John Deere green. Here I have the factory stock undercarriage on the top and our NASCAR modified undercarriage on the bottom. Here we have our finished NASCAR interior and you can see just how cool this now looks. Here's our model with the frog tape down and I did try to get right along that edge as best I could. I've taken the decal sheet, at least one of them, and I cut the top off right along the black trim line. And now, on to the show. After a day or two, I started considering whether or not to sand the top down and repaint another coat on there and make it nice and smooth. But then I was thinking, uh, let's just carry on with life for two reasons. Number one is that I still have that orange peel ripping up the side here. And I didn't address that and sand that down and perfect this out. So therefore I'm thinking, let's not bother perfecting the roof out either because really, like I was saying, this is a race on Thursday, or bought on Thursday, race for Saturday type of car. And uh, they needed it done quick, quick, quick. So they just had the uh, shop kid paint the top with a big brush. I don't know. <laughs> let's go with that story. The second thing is, I'm already into video six on this, and I'm thinking each video is only 45 minutes, and I'm already half an hour, as are you at this point. So if I start doing this again, there's more time just on doing that. And um, I don't want to be 85 years old by the time I finish this one model car. So let's just move on. It looks good enough anyway. I, I do like the coloring and all that. So let's just move on and get into applying the decals. In order to apply our decals, I have the following tools. This is a tray, and I'm going to put water in the tray because these are water slide decals, which means that the decal will slide off this backing paper. The other thing is a new sharp number 11 hobby blade. I also have a ruler, in this case it being a 45 degree angle, but still the edges are nice and clean on this. Except for this edge, it's got a bit of a cut in it. <laughs> so I'm not using that edge. And then I've got toilet paper, and this would be to, uh, once the decal is on the car body, just take a piece of this and fold it a bit, and you use this to blot the water off of the uh, model car and from between the decal. And you're going to basically you know, squeegee out the water sort of thing, and the paper towel, or the toilet paper, will absorb the water from it. So now let's take a look in depth. Oh, the other thing I have is a plate of glass. This plate of glass is a nice, hard, smooth, flat surface, better than wood, and uh, it will allow you to make a nice, good, clean cut. The only thing I will warn you about is the edges of the glass can be sharp, and if you drop it, of course, it will shatter everywhere. So use this with caution. If you are worried about using glass, just go on an old uh, wooden cutting board. Use the wooden cutting, wooden cutting board. This uh, cutting on glass is new for me too. So I'll be very careful because usually I just go in the kitchen and use the cutting board. But we'll try glass. Now in this particular case on these decals, I have enlarged the wheel well opening, so it's going to be different from how AMT printed this. Mine's going to be wider. So we will address how I'm going to make this wider uh, as we go through here. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is, if you look at the decal, you'll notice that it's uh, nice and shiny on the sheet, of course, from the backing paper, which is sort of a matte finish. So you've got a glossy finish and a matte finish. Now, if you look at the decal, I don't know if I can catch this on film, but right where that black line is, right here, if you just back your eye out a little bit and sort of move it around, you'll notice that some of that glossy bit goes onto the backing paper. There's just like a little thin edge along there. That is because they usually print the decal a little narrower than that transparency. Now, what you want to do is you want to remove just the transparent part under the line, and, yeah, above the line here. 
basically that transparent piece goes all the way around the entire decal. So you want to cut it off the transparency part of it because uh, that will, you know, be on the side of your car, the transparent bit. And there is an issue with decals sometimes. It's called silvering. And that is where if you have this little transparent edge around and it doesn't lay down flat, it actually will lift off of the paint just a microbe. And it makes it so that you can see this clear edge as a kind of a defect in the color around that edge. And that's known as silvering. So you don't want that silvering there. Now, I already cut the top off on this side. And that was so that we could, you know, see what it looked like up against the body. So in order to cut it off of this edge, that's why I have a clear ruler, by the way. You want to uh, lay your ruler. Okay, I got to get in because my eyes are not good. <laughs> but I did get a phone call for my eye exam, which is tomorrow. Okay, so I'm lining up. I usually take the edge of my knife here and I kind of just set it against where that transparency is and then I can move the ruler in to the and line it up with the edge of my knife. Should be right there. And then on this end, I just move the ruler until I can see it lining up with the edge of the uh, the line where I'm going to go to. Now taking my sharp knife, I'm going to press in, hold the ruler down as firm as you can, because if it slips, you're going to cut your color. Okay, so there we are. So now that it's scored which means I haven't cut through the paper. But it has cut through the transparency if you still need the paper to uh, to go on. My brand new sharp hobby blade is not very sharp, and it's not very new. <laughs> and it's tearing. All right, anyway. Okay, so that is the concept. Now what I also want to do is, because we have to address that wheel opening, so now I can find my groove here. I've got the tip of my knife in the groove. And we'll just go to the edge here. Just like Bono, you too. The edge. We'll go to the edge. Uh. Okay, so I have apparently cut through. And I hope I'm not going off camera. I can't really see where I am here. Yeah, I definitely need a new blade. <laughs> Owner of the hobby shop, and I can never keep a new blade in a knife. <laughs> I don't know why. All right. It's like the guy that owns a car wash, and his car is the dirtiest car in the building. Same, same thing. Hmm. You know what knife I find always seems to be sharp all the time? Are those really cheap ones that uh, Testers gives you with the black plastic handle that are really flat? For some reason that blade, it, I guess they heat tempered it or something, but it never seems to go dull. Okay, so here I have that wedge shape. And what I'm going to do as well is, you know, take the ruler and cut the extra bit of film off of there, and then cut a little notch in there and there. But to get this wheel opening down here into the new shape that I need, I'm going to leave that as it is, and I will just grab the car body. All right, so here we have the car body, and now we'll just move that decal into place. You'll notice the front is curved, and that's to line up with that wheel arch. Still got to cut that paper off a bit. Okay, so it's supposed to go up into that body line. And now, as you can see, the wheel arch up here is above this area. So I need a pencil. And I don't have one in my immediate area. Oh, yes, I do. Haha. -ha. What I'm going to do here is... This might work with a bit of tape as well. But for right now, like you would... Put a little tape here and here just to hold the decal in place. 
temporarily. Because what I'll do is I will turn this over. And now in that wheel arch you can see where our decal is. And I'll just use the wheel arch here. Make a little curve there and there. I have to do that with my off camera with my glasses off just so I can see where I'm going. Okay, it was too light. But at any rate, there is the curve there for the new wheel arch. And what I would do is take a little pair of scissors and just cut that. So now it, it's going right to the top. So I'm actually going to lose this bit of the decal. So there would be two decals after. But what I do is just cut that curve and then on the back wherever the arch was, because I didn't press hard enough, <laughs> on my second attempt, I will cut whatever that arch is and then I'll have two decals and that wheel arch will be the correct radius. Before I actually begin cutting out the wheel opening, I just wanted to mention that if you are building this as a street machine and you did not open up your wheel arch, don't worry about cutting this here. All you need to do is just remove it along that black line and uh, get this section out of the way so that the little film isn't hanging over your wheel opening. But uh, the other thing I did here is I just cut the edges just so that it will uh, fit better to the body. So again, let's just take a quick look at that before any cutting of decal begins. There you can see that front angle matches up with the wheel arch in the front. And where's that line? There it is. Just back here, it does almost look like the decal comes a little off the edge of the car. But uh, we'll see that a lot better once we actually apply the decal. Right, so here is the wheel arches. And I brought down my little scissors. These are, uh, you know, medical, I guess, mustache scissors or something like that. But they are really nice. Now, there is another theory here before I cut that is that I could actually just sort of cut it up here kind of thing, because we know that that area here is not going to touch any part of the car. But, you know, to cut it a bit wider, and then when the decal is, uh, you know, ready to be applied, when it's after it's come out of the water and everything, I can put this up against the car. That little bit would be sticking out, so, you know, this much sort of thing. And then what I would do is, because the decal is wet, I could wrap that portion around up into the wheel arch opening back in here. And then that way, like if I cut that curve and I accidentally cut it a bit short, you're going to see a paint line, you know, sort of up and around that edge right there. Because <laughs> I cut it back a little too far. So, uh, you know, if you want the continuous color to come through, you could just you know, cut it back sort of there and then wrap that edge around. Or, uh, you know, leave the little white part if you cut it too short. So that's sort of the escape route. But I think what I'll do in this case is I'm just going to risk it for the biscuit and uh, cut my decal, decal in half. Uh, I'm doing this from a distance, so I hope I didn't just miss my own line. Kind of did. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut the other one off camera. But basically now I have two decals. Oh, now that's interesting. The arch did not quite line up to my curve. Okay, but I might be... It looks like I'm still okay. There's enough here. Yeah, just to wrap it a little. Actually, I could... Uh, Get in there and cut this arch to the arch I just cut. You know what I mean? Okay. Get in close here. Let's see. Make sure I'm yeah <laughs> in the right position. Okay, let's try that. It's 
still a little over the edge, but that's okay because, like I said, that end will wrap over the edge of the wheel opening. But there, see, now that is more, uh, more what we're after. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now, back to the show. Now we're pretty much ready to apply our decals to our car. I've got both sections of that cut out to the proper wheel arches. And what we're going to do is submerge the decal in water. Actually, not really submerge it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now here I have this nice pan. This was actually from an old science set back in the 60s. And my dad rescued it for decals because it seems to work really well. Now, uh, I think I'll put the back decal on the car first. So, the water in here is tap warm water. So that is purely the hot water from the kitchen tap, or uh, the bathtub tap, or bathroom tap. Bathtub, you might uh, knock this on the floor doing that. But basically, this is the pan. Now, it's too bad I don't have any superhero decals, because then I could could, uh, you know, have a flash in the pan, but uh, we don't have that. That's a little joke. Okay, so I am putting the decal right on top of the water, and if you notice, they always seem to go into the side of the pan. But if you notice, as soon as I touched it into the water, it started to curl. Now, this is a short de decal. Maybe on the long one, it'll really coil up, and uh, sometimes that happens. It coils right around like a spring. And what you want to do is you want to watch the decal because this coiling action is the backing paper sucking up the water. And when the decal or the paper actually flattens out, that's when it is telling you that it has absorbed enough water that the decal will slide off of the paper. Now, in order to get the decal to stick on the paper, the AMT and the D, well, let's just call them the decal manufacturers, they have a bit of glue, and they put the glue down in a strip, or however the decal is shaped, and then the decal goes on top of the glue. So you're separating the paper, uh, actually you're removing the glue from the backing paper and the bottom of the decal. And now this looks like it's all flat. So I've got another tool here that I forgot to mention, because I don't really use it that often. But these are tweezers, as you can see. So, carefully you want to grab the decal with the tweezers. Whoops. There. Now we've got an issue. You see the backing paper came off the decal? Now it's not a problem, because you can move it back into position carefully. And grab it. So usually I just use my fingers, so... I'll go with what I go. I've seen uh, professional model builders where they're wearing uh, rubber gloves and they've got, you know, they're taking this out like a surgeon removing a, a nail from your body or something. <laughs> so I'm not like that kind of guy. I am a very caveman approach, clumsy, big fat fingers kind of guy. All right, so move this out of the way. Now, <laughs> get our car body, and what I should do is blow that section off and get rid of the dust. Okay, so basically I'm going to put my decal into position. I'll tap a bit of water on here, and then, I know this is going to be interesting, I'm trying to hold the decal and everything. Okay, move that into somewhat position. All right, I move my hands, I'll put my thumb back here, and I will pull the paper out, just like that. Now, the uh, decal will move if there's a little bit of water between the decal itself and the model car. Now we just move this into position. I think that's where it's intended to be. All right, anyway, here's what I'm going to do. So just bear with me. <laughs> Listen to the music, and uh, I'm just going to bring this up to my eye off camera. 
do 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 the girl from Eponema, she goes somewhere. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Hope you enjoyed that music. Now, I've got my little bit of toilet paper here. And sometimes you'll notice, this doesn't seem too bad, but sometimes on some of the older decals, that glue between the decal and the backing paper is super thick. And it will be all cloudy and awful looking. So in those cases, what I do is I have the decal in the water and I slide it off the paper carefully. And then I try to wipe off all the glue from the paper. And then I try to put the decal back on the paper with less glue on it and then bring it out and do this. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Almost looks like I'm a little low. Oh, and my knife chiseled up that uh, nice black edge. I should have used a new blade. Let that be a lesson. Uh, it's race day, they were in a hurry. <laughs> I don't know. Is that excuse getting old? Okay, now, because I blotted the decal, but it's kind of in the wrong position. Sometimes you can just apply a little water. Here we go. And catch the decal and lift it. And just roll it back. Come on. There we go. Now, I don't know if you notice it, but the water is underneath the decal in that one little area. Now, come on, move up there. Oop. Wrinkle right in there. Come on. Give it to Papa. <laughs> okay. There we go. There, that's closer to the body line. Probably as close as I need to get. And this little area right in there. Cut square, but the contour is a bit of a curve. Okay. There we go. There. Now, carefully I'm blotting any water out of there. And this should set. Now, some people use something called uh, decal set or solve a set. Uh, I think solve a set's from the model train world. It does the same thing. It's essentially like a vinegar with some other chemicals in there. And what it does is you apply the solve a set on here and it will uh, somewhat etch the decal. It stretches it on a microscopic level. And then when the solution settles out, it makes a decal slightly thinner and will adhere better to the surface. Uh, if, you, if you're doing this like on a model airplane and you've got rivets on the wings and you put your decal on there and then you use the solva set, it will somewhat melt the decal so that the decal will make the rivets appear, you know, uh, by being so thin. But I don't think I need the solva set in this case. Now the other thing is some people will clear coat over the top and that's fine. It locks the decal to the car. But with the clear coat, it gives you a shinier car than what factory might have done. I find that the gloss paint from Tremclad or whatever is good enough for the sheen that you're supposed to have. But again, it's all up to preference. If you like the ultra high gloss, you know, clear coat look, go for it. It's your model. It's not mine. I'm not coming to your house. <laughs> you know, anyway, I might see it online, but... Uh, that's only if you post the picture. Now let's do the long decal, and I'll show you that that uh, spring coil, as it were. Now this, there, see? See how it's coiling right around, like big letter J? Uh, sometimes I've seen these things curl right up, like a tight spring like that. So just lay it on its side, and uh, let it do its thing. 
Here's our long decal after applying it, and I did notice a spot where you could actually use the Solvacet, and that would be to melt this decal a little bit with the Solvacet, and then it should conform to the door panel line. The other way to do that is to just use your knife here without the Solvacet. I mean, so you're using your knife and you're pushing the decal into the door jams. You're not cutting the decal, you're just forcing it down. There, now I've got the decal conforming to the body line. Although, is it me or did it, does it look like I just kicked this up a little tiny bit right in the front? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I did. <laughs> that is interesting. Okay, I'll correct that. But basically, that's the idea. And these are looking pretty neat, actually. Especially with my orange roof there setting it off. That is cool. All I have to do now is just make the front one. It is unfortunate. This doesn't seem to line up with the wheel arch. See? <laughs> so maybe I can uh, move that. Or maybe when I pushed it in the door jam, it moved it back a little. All right, I'll correct this out. Here's our final decal, and what I need to do now is just get a little bit of that gloss black paint that I've got in here and touch up the edges so that the decal looks a little bit better because my knife did have a little bit of uh, fun time chipping the edges. So if you've got a brand new blade, this would not happen, but unfortunately I do. So I will need a little bit of touch up, but overall you can see just how nice and cool that actually looks now, especially with the orange top. And then once I put it on the chassis, you can see how the green wheels will tie into the green of the stripe of the decal. Here's the front three-quarter mock-up view of how our car looks. And you can see that wonderful graphic right across the side there and how nicely it ties in with the roof and how the green lines up with the wheels in the bottom. So again, really cool looking stuff. Now, I am going to finish a model and take a picture of the model like this so that everybody knows what it looks like with the kit supply decals. Then after that, a little later in the video, I found some Star Trek numbers that I can put on. They are black and uh, I can put those on the doors here from the old USS Enterprise kit. And then I've got another set of decals that are white and uh, they're slightly larger numbers. So I'll figure out what the numbers are and I will put the numbers that are white on the roof so that they stand out and are a little bit larger for my uh, NASCAR version. And then I found my old decal sheets that have the sponsor logos on them. So I will apply those to the model later on after I take a picture so that you know what it looks like out of the box with the kit supply decals and then what it'll look like with some decals from the parts box to dress it up to give it the full NASCAR appearance. Now we get into my favorite part of the build and that's the part where there's only a few pieces left and it'll go really fast just to get them installed and then start putting the car together. So what we have here are the two rear window straps and that's for the NASCAR racing. We also have the rear bumper fill-in panels, the tricky air cleaner, which I think might be a problem with the fit between the hood and the engine. And then we have the glass. Now I'm going to leave this off and this off and this off until we get the glass in. And uh, it's going to be interesting because a lot of people are saying that the glass is sized incorrectly. So I'm going to actually see if it will all fit. Now, before we carry on with finishing off the model, I just have to do a few more little things, which I'll do off camera, but I'm going to just point them out. I need to paint up under here with the semi-gloss black so that when it's put together on the chassis, and you turn it over, you don't start seeing the white underneath or through the wheel arches in the back or anything like that. So that is the uh, model car camouflage. Secondly, I want to apply some bare metal foil around the window openings before I install the glass. And I'm just mentioning this because I have made a video in my tips and tech section about applying bare metal foil. So you guys can check that one out and give that video a couple more watches. And uh, anyway, so that is simple on this kit because with the NASCAR, I basically remove most of the chrome. All that needs to be done is the window opening in the front 
or in the rear and in the front. But I think I might also just use the Molotol paint pen down here in the front because it's easier to paint the curve in here. Might do some bare metal foil across the top one. But uh, yeah, it, and this entire window post is chromed as on the real car, so it's easy to do. The other thing is to paint the underneath of that hood. And uh, I might also have to file this down a little bit. We're going to have to test those air cleaners with this hood. So I might want to save painting that, but it will be done at some point. Uh, I also have to paint the radiator flat black just to make it look right. And then scrape the paint off of here where it's going to contact onto the frame right along there. And I also have to, oh, I have to scrape paint off of here, where it's going to connect up in the body in here. And maybe a little up front for up front on the dashboard. Well, you know, in that zone. And I have to clear the paint out of the curves and around this window opening a little bit before I glue the glass into place. Now, I can also paint up top with white. Um, maybe I will. I wasn't going to do it originally because I thought, okay, well, the the uh, NASCAR people have stripped all the headliner and everything out of the car, so you're going to see some, uh, you know, overspray and whatnot there. And it would be almost bare metal up here even. But then looking at this, the way it's a box at a funny angle, I think I'll just brush paint white in there after I glue the windows in. So those are the off-camera things I'm going to do just to speed this video up and not make it a 15 hour long video and uh, get on to the factory stock version. Oh, and one more thing. I think before I put the chassis in, I am going to glue the front and rear bumper into place. Now I know Pete was talking about gluing it in afterwards and then maybe taking a little bit off the back of the chassis, but I don't find that my chassis is in the wrong location because I cut those pins off and I was able to move it in and lock the front wheels into these uh, shock towers. So I'm going with that for my method. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, hopefully it'll all work. Oh, and then the other thing is I've got to attach those little bits and I have to put the battery in as well. So those are a bunch of the things I am thinking of doing off camera, but I will show you gluing in the glass after I bare metal foil in here. So uh, let's move on. Here's where I actually scraped away the paint in order to get those parts to glue in with a plastic to plastic positive contact. So right down there on the curve of the windshield and then on the roof curve of the windshield. So just there and there. And then in the back glass, I cleared all this area up top and down below, I cleared in here. I also left some clearance room for the little tabs of the interior to lock into place. Now inside the curve, I just went with the bottom of that curve bit, trying not to get back here because these taillights are kind of countersunk in a little bit, just like the headlights. Same on this side. Then scraped along there and there and there and there for the uh, body to glue down onto the chassis. And then right up in here I scraped and that is for the front headlights to glue in. Now on the chrome pieces I have also scraped the chrome plating up off the sides and uh, that should, once I get the glue on here, so we'll do a little pretend. Pretend I just put the glue in there. Right. Okay, so now this will go into here. Oops. Just like so. And I can see now where Willie is talking about putting the spacer in. So I couldn't figure out if I was to file in here and here and relieve it so that the grill would sit down to the trunk lid. But then Willie explained it to me a bit, little bit later and what he did is he put in a very thin piece of styrene, glued it right across there and uh, notched it out just a little bit here for the emblem to fit in. 
and he basically brought this piece of the trunk panel down to meet the grill. And what I thought he meant originally was to relieve the plastic up here to bring the grill up into the trunk lid. So it's kind of too late for this model because it's all painted, but on the factory stock one, which is still not painted, and I'm saving that for a future video, I will glue in that little strip. So the NASCAR is going to have a gap under the trunk lid, but the factory stock one will not. So again, those are all the areas that were scraped, and now we can get into installing the windows. By the way, I did not put the uh, chrome foil around the window frames just yet. I will do that. I just, when I was scraping, I didn't want to put it on in case uh, you grab the model and bare metal foil will want to move. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to make sure everything was locked down and scraped clean before I actually started to manhandle the roof in case I was like pulling all the bare metal foil over everything. Ah, and the other thing I need to do is just scrape this little bit here because that's where our battery is going to go down. And here I've painted up the batteries, make them nice and neat. You can just remove one and clean up that little edge in here. Just uh, scrape this away. Okay, whatever. And uh, then... Once I scrape this little area where it's going to sit onto, I can glue that battery right into place. Right into place. <laughs> anyway, on that sill. Behave. So, yeah. It's got to go underneath that little bit. Like that. And uh, that will be the battery. Well, I just discovered another issue. So the battery is in the right location according to images on the internet. However, <laughs> part of the battery has to be removed because when you glue it in like this, the whole thing is... I don't know, can I show this? It's sloping up at an angle. It's uh, not sitting flat like that in the engine bay. I guess like this. It's uh, sitting into that fender like that. So what I suggest really, whoops, the only solution I have here, so I got to rip that battery out of there, but instead of it coming square down here like this, I'm going to just have to cut a little angle out of that battery on both sides. I'm going to use my Xeron cutters for the one I just glued in and snap it off. Snap, snap. So you got a slight angle and then that battery should sit flat. And cutting that angle just made the difference. And you thought the Hobbit's trip was unexpected. So I just laid down my bare metal foil in the back and I need to do a little orange touch up right there. And for the front, I'm going to use the frog tape along this edge and then paint in with the Molotol chrome pen for this windshield. Here's what a car is looking like so far. I've added in the chrome with the Molotol pen up front and it looks as bright as the bare metal foil in the back. In fact, I really like how this looks. I let it sit overnight, so hopefully it is all nice and dry. I know uh, some people have had some issues with the Molotol pens, but those are other people's videos, so... <laughs> now, the other thing I did... Well, I got the hood here. I haven't painted the hood pins or the lettering just yet. They will be painted with the Molotol. But remember that I still have to test fit once we get our air cleaner in here. Come on, you. Come on, you. Quiet, you. All right. So I can just take the hood off. So underneath it's still gray. Earl gray. But remember, I might have to uh, correct in here for those air cleaners. So I'm just leaving that portion. That's why I haven't done much on it. Now there's the battery I got in. As you'll notice, I painted the radiator with the flat black. It's no longer... Uh, glaring white out there. Now this is not glued together just yet. Now one thing I did is I glued on the front bumper and the rear bumper. So this is glued in place where it's supposed to be and I have no issues with that chassis pan having to slide it back or grind off a bit of the back or anything. All I did was cut the pins off and that cured everything. All right anyway 
Uh, the other thing I remembered is that in here is supposed to be body color, but I painted that orange instead of white, just to, to give a little bit of a racy look. Now the only thing I have to do now, well, I'll have to paint black inside here on that back part of the chrome bumper, just like the front, just to, uh, you know, darken it out so you don't see. But now what I need to do is put the glass in, and this is the part that I've been afraid of the most, because um, I've seen a lot of people talking about the glass in this. Now one thing I did notice with the glass is, well, I'll show you. Oh, but before I show you the glass, uh, just real quick, I did scrape this back portion off on the package shelf, and then I painted all flat black in here, just so you know. Uh, Oops. Unfortunately, though, I did get some flat black up along this edge, which I might be able to get rid of with a little bit of uh, paint thinner on a Q-tip. I'm going to try that, if not. But what happened is when you put the body and interior together, you can see that little bit of black paint line in there. and It looks really junky, <laughs> so hopefully I can remove it. But now uh, when you turn the car upside down, you can see that just in behind the... Um, the engine here, it's all blacked out and up into the wheel arches. And so you won't be able to see this interior because it's been blacked out if you flip the car over. So remember to uh, paint all that before you glue the interior together. Now my observations with the glass is as follows. You'll notice on yours that there is a bit of a distortion just in this area right in here. It sort of looks like a T in a weird way. You can see like these arms coming out and then this little bit in here. Now I found that that distortion wants to really fit nicely as being the back part of the windshield. Or rear glass, I guess. Wind glass panel. Let's go with that. I like that. So that little distortion seems to be wanting to go into the back. Now if you go and glue this too high, you'll see the distortion on this side through the roof looking down. So you want to try to just get that line of the distortion to be just right in behind here. So behind here is a distortion, but you don't want it to be where you can see the distortion, so try to glue it in there. There is a bit of a gap in here between the roof and the glass, and uh, I don't know if I can tip this up high enough, but you'll see it as you're building your own model. And really, that gap will disappear by applying some pressure to the roof and to the trunk lid as you're gluing this down. But what I'm going to try to do is take my tester's red tube glue, because I want the plastic to plastic contact and the melting. I'm going to apply the tester's tube glue in the corners here, because another issue that people have been saying is that when you put the interior in somehow it hits this rear window. So I'm going to be very careful to position the window in the right spot, take the uh, little bit of glue in there and try the interior to see if it does move. And if it doesn't move, all is good. Then uh, what I'm going to try to do is when the tester's glue is drying, I'm going to run a little tiny bit of crazy glue just along this edge, or I could also use tester's liquid glue, do the same thing, just so that the capillary action makes the glue go underneath there. And then I will apply the pressure in the middle on the roof and the trunk lid. And I'm thinking the crazy glue will set pretty fast, so I don't have to hold this overnight or something like that. And then this window should be locked into place the way it should be, and when I let go, the uh, trunk lid and roof will hold in place with the crazy glue. And with the tester's red tube glue, it is getting the plastic to plastic instead of the crazy glue to two surfaces sort of thing. You know, it will get the melted weld in the corners. Or if I use the liquid glue, it'll weld it all the way across. But at either rate, that's what I'm going to try. Pete's observed that this window is quite long in here. Now if you put the glass toward the bottom, what I'm going to do is put my glass up along the bottom of this edge and not have it go down any further. So right along there. And uh, keep it, keep that bottom edge nice and even with the 
edge of the windshield frame. And then again, I think I'm going to glue the bottom in first and then test that interior and see if it moves this glass or pinches against it or something like that. Um, and then I'll add some glue to the top and glue it into place at the top. So when I'm saying try the interior, it's basically drop a glue interior, <laughs> you know, to see if it moves or whatever. It's not like drop a glue and then wait 24 hours and then try to do something because if this is wrong, in that 24 hour period, you're going to have a heck of a time getting that thing out. So I want to kind of do it like, you know, right away with the glue still a bit tacky. Then if it's okay, I can carefully lift up the glass and then put a bit of glue underneath and then bring the glass back down and squish it in place. Okay, one thing I'm going to say before I glue this together is I'm going to do one window at a time because if I try to do both at the same time and then put the interior in and one shifts the other or something weird, it's going to be a lot of uh, mess on the glass and, you know, I might say some naughty words and things. So I'm going to do one window at a time and uh, go from there. You know, everybody's got me so worried about putting in this glass that I'm really hesitant to try it. And what's going through my mind right now as I'm about to put this in is the music from the original Star Trek series episode called The Doomsday Machine. You know, when uh, Captain Kirk was trying to beam back and the Doomsday Machine was coming down on him. And, uh, and they played that music that went... <laughs> anyway, think of that while I'm gluing this in. Okay, so the issue that I found with the glass, I took it out, as you can tell. Um, but I did put it in, and I've got a little glue mark in a corner there, just to let you know. What happened is, when I put this in, it pushed the interior down. See, like you can see the door panels are flush at the top. But when that glass went in and this went together, it pushed it down. Now my thought is that maybe it's because I tilted the dashboard up just a little bit, remember? It may be interfering there. So I'm going to try to uh, to take the dashboard out. Oh, and the uh, Q-tip thing did work. So hopefully I didn't glue that in too hard, but we'll find out. Okay, Scooby-Doo gang, I think I've figured out the mystery of this front windshield. All right, so first off, if you look at the windshield, it will fit into this groove. This keeps uh, kind of shifting up a little bit at this corner on me. But what you want to do is you want a little bit of a ridge between here and here, just like a millimeter or so downward. So not quite flush with the uh, bottom of this, just a little bit down. Just a little bit. And then, the other thing I found out... Okay, so I did have to cut my dashboard, like, pop it out of the corners here, because I can't have it tilted upward like it probably would uh, look best at. But what happened is... I know you're not going to see this, <laughs> but I'll try to explain it anyway. Maybe you can. So... I got the window at sort of its lowest point, the windshield, in that frame. Now you can't see the gap, so it will have to be pushed inward. So don't worry about that. That's not the important part. So without the glass, this door panel comes up and lines flush. Like the interior lines up flush with the exterior door panel. But with that window in, you're almost there. The thing that I noticed here is in this corner, like way down there, you're not going to see this on film, you'll have to do it with your model, but you'll notice that the windshield is coming down at a steep angle, like that, and then bisecting that window right here on that corner right where the dashboard comes down, because what I've done is I've taken the dashboard and I pushed it down as far as I could till it stopped moving. So now you've got this little white area sticking up. Now keep that in mind. What is happening here is that the, 
the windshield is coming down at this angle, and that little white corner, what do I got here? I've got this, the battery box. That little white corner is coming up like this. Oops, sorry. Like this, right into where that windshield is. So in order to correct that, we need to take our hobby knife and cut the corner of the white box just a little bit and then it will butt up against that windshield very much like with the battery uh, remember the battery under the hood here and I said um, oh, the battery under the hood and I said when it glued in you have the uh, fender skirt like uh, like this sort of thing and that battery was sitting like this originally but by cutting that at a, the battery at an angle in that one corner, I got it like that, sitting flat. So it's the same thing with this. You're going to have to take your knife blade and just cut a relaxed corner off of there. Just like that. And another relaxed corner in the opposite direction, just off of there. And then that should clear that angle of the windshield, and this interior should go right up right inside and fit flush with this edge right on that door edge and there it is that's exactly what it needed in those little corners that were sticking up they just needed to be filed down at an angle to match the windshield angle inside which you can't see because you got to go across to that side back there but at any rate that is what it took this interior is now sitting up as if there was no glass in it at all like before and now that windshield being in place. Now I just, like I said, I just tacked it in the two corners. But now I've got it positioned so I can actually press it in, which might even make the interior fit even better. Press it in, add a liquid glue in there, and add liquid glue right along there. <laughs> there, and um, that should be good for the windshield. And then I'll have to focus on the back glass. Here's our glass after gluing it in place. And now it's nice and solid. So I did push it up against the uh, the windshield frame and I added in liquid glue in there and it turned out to be quite nice. Now I don't know if you can catch the edge but it is pretty tight up in there. So again, worked out really, really well. Now uh, we have to do the back window and then I can paint inside here and then assemble the interior. One thing I'm going to do before I actually glue any more in is use this little rag. This is a microfiber rag that you get with uh, a pair of glasses. And that's just to get rid of my fingerprints from pushing on the glass. And I'm going to have to thank myself later for doing this now. <laughs> because once everything's glued together, it'll be very hard to get fingerprints off the inside of the windshield. Maybe I should wear some painter's gloves, but... Uh, Anyway, there it is. Let's go to the back. Here's the windshield from the ground level, and it's looking really good in there. I got it all nice and tight and really pretty. I glued in the back window using the same technique as I did in the front window, which was to apply four little bits of glue into each corner from the tester's red tube glue. And then I put a little liquid glue along this edge and this edge with the brush while I was pushing in on the glass and I had my finger up underneath here and there just for a bit of a brace support you know as I was pushing and uh, it went in nice and flat and perfectly smooth so then with the interior bucket now you're gonna move it in from the back and just rotate it into the front and then slip it back until it lines up these little moon-shaped things go into the little what's left of the posts there. And there it is with the interior, and it's a nice tight fit. You can see uh, right into this area here, there is no hang-ups or anything. So by putting the rear window in the right place, which is just, remember that little distortion? The edge of the distortion going up under in here. And it looks nice and clean. Now the only thing I need to do is put in the NASCAR window braces. 
and I'm going to have to figure out how far away they are from these edges and then uh, put them together and then of course the other thing is first I'm going to glue that interior in but before I glue the interior in remember we have to paint the headliner and a bit back here just around the window edge I guess with a little bit of the interior color just to cover all this uh, you know scraping and bare plastic so that is what I'm going to glue together next. So basically what I'm going to do, just to give you the heads up, paint and then right along this edge, I'm going to add a bit of red testers glue and maybe a little bit up front where it's going to contact. Although I don't think I need to do that. Oh, the dashboard is not glued in. It's just pressure fit because I think there's enough tightness in here now to... Uh, actually have the dashboard getting trapped you know by the window glass so it won't come out but yeah that's what I'll do glue that in you want to glue your interior in first and then the chassis pan is the final piece you're gonna install but remember to paint back here too <laughs> and uh, you should be good I just want to point out how I painted the interior here so I just used the paintbrush and made a little line just on the top of the windshield frame there and the same with the front window right across there and then painted the inside and I was going to paint a little line back here but when I put the interior in and I tried to look from the window from the outside in I could not see any gray in there so I will just leave this so that that back panel can glue in here and end up nice and tight. Our next step is to glue the interior in place and there it is there. Now it is just glued in on the back on this strip because when I glue the front of the car in it's going to be all well with all the tension up here. So I believe that this will pinch down sort of on here. The other thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue in here and here. You want to go sparingly with the glue because if you put too much in here it will actually melt through and leave a ripple right in there. I've done it a few times on my earlier kits when I was young and just learning model building. So after a while I kind of refined it and just basically pretend it's like a ketchup right on a hot dog. You don't want to go all over everywhere because you know it's too much ketchup. So you just put a little bit on one end and then you spread it along with like your hobby knife or I even use these kind of things and just spread the glue from one end to the other and uh, that will uh, be enough. So next up what I'm gonna do of course like I said is just glue the undercarriage in and you can see now you have to spread it out a little on the sides just to get it to seat down there but by removing the pins up front now remember the bumpers are all glued in and this just went in nice and smooth and easy no problems didn't have to file anything away from the back on the chassis and if I just turn this on the side you can see it all fits in now remember though the front has to seat so it will lift up the back just a little bit and get it into the right position so I'll glue this together and show you what it looks like Here's the Ford Torino after I glued it up in the front and you can see now how level it is sitting across the body there. Now one thing to keep in mind, the hood fits nice and flat, but right now I don't have this air cleaner underneath the hood. So we'll address that in a minute here. But what I wanted to show you was the side view of the car. And now you can see it is sitting nice and level. Now I do believe I actually cut this wheel opening wrong. <laughs> I don't think it's the alignment with the wheel because I think if I turn this around the other way you can see that this back wheel is more centered to the wheel opening on this side. So obviously I must have messed something up. I also noticed that the rocker panel underneath is just down a millimeter lower on one side than the other um, but it all sits level in the front as you can see uh, so again I'm not really sure what that issue is 
but I'm at this stage of digging through thousands of issues with this kit, I think I'll give that one a free pass. And there it is from the back. Now I will have to add a little bit of a black wash just to get this grill to pop out back here, but I wanted to show all the fit and finish on how I got to this point with this kit. And overall, I mean, I think I might have mastered it, but uh, there's still some issues, of course, obviously. However, though, I think this is really nice. So next I'll have to paint the door handles, or the handle block out. Block off. Block out. What is that? And then I've got to paint these and cut them off and glue them. These are the uh, streamlined bumper edges so that that bumper isn't, like, sticking out a little bit. But let's take a look at this air cleaner under the hood. So like I was saying, you can see that the hood is sitting down nice and flat. But the air cleaner is not actually underneath there. So this is what we are going for with the air cleaner to make sure the clearance is all right. Here we have that big dual carb monster motor. And now if I put the air cleaner on here carefully. Okay, it seems to want to fit in that way. So that's what it would look like with this sort of race car, NASCAR, whatever, dual air cleaner. Which is not really right, because it should have a single version of that. But now let's drop the hood down. And here you can see, actually, it is, oops, sorry, it is just sitting up ever so slightly. So I think in order to get this down dead flat, yeah, maybe, yeah, you can see it kind of sticking up in the front here more. Okay, the one thing to do is push down the hood. Yeah, it is rocking the hood a little bit. Sorry, I'm moving my camera too. It's rocking the hood a little bit. So that air cleaner has to be relieved a little bit, but we're so close to it. So if you've done the carburetors, you know, you might want to sand them down just a slight bit more. But I think in this case, I'm going to try to relieve underneath the air cleaner. So I think I finally got this thing. It feels just a little bit high. Just, like, just a hair, right? And I don't want to go any further because I think I might end up cutting through things. But basically, what I found the issue to be... If I can get the hood now open. There we go. It's a real tight fit. So, taking the hood off, you can see the air cleaner here. Now I'm going to have to actually glue that and adjust it a little bit. Paint it first, of course. Now, what I did was, I got my number 16 hobby blade here. And under the air cleaner, I did this sort of thing. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until I had essentially... I guess you call this planing it down, really, in a way. So I planed down enough of the inner material to get this to sit flat. As flat as I could. And then when I put the hood down, it was still a bit high. So, just to show here, this is the original hood. This is from the Cobra kit that's coming up later. And you can see that they molded in the cross brace. This sunken in part is for the street machine, of course. You cut this out, and then you put your um, velocity stacks on your air cleaners and have them poking through the center of the hood, right? But we don't want that for the NASCAR, or the not NASCAR, because it's supposed to be a single barrel. So you can see the cross brace comes across here, goes across there and there, and there's one in the back as well. Now what I did here is I scraped down, like you can see the cutout line, this is from the original uh, dual carb setup thing from the 1968 kit, but there's that line there. So I did that same technique, back and forth, back and forth, wiggy waggy, wiggy waggy, <laughs> and I went down below that uh, inscribed line just a bit. And I removed the brace in here in the back and the little cross attachments there and there. And after doing that and the air cleaner, now 
it actually will let the hood go right down to where it's supposed to be. It's a little bit uh, pinched in the front corner, just slightly. But that is going to be as far down as I'm going to take that hood. Because like I say, if I, I have a feeling if I try to do that scraping technique a little further, I might cut a bit of this up. And I don't want to do that. Or I might cut through the air cleaners. And I don't want to do that. So just take your time with this. Go a little bit, put the air cleaners on, put the hood on, test it. Take it off, do it a little bit more, test it. You know, put it all back together, test it, and do that. I did this about three or four times to get it to where this is now, and I'm going to stop. Because if I go any further, it's going to ruin it. So now all I would need to do is take the hood off, paint all this flat black underneath, and I know for the guys that like the accuracy, this whole section in here, you're kind of sacrificing it for all the uh, hood cutouts and custom bits. So really what should be happening is this should all be level in here. So maybe f uh, fill it in with some putty and hope it doesn't burn your top of the hood. Or plastic sheet maybe, I don't know. But basically you want to fill this with something and then redo your cross braces and all. But you want your air cleaner then to be lower because you might end up having this same hood issue by adding in the extra bits. So it's up to you. I mean, you can super detail this after if you like, but I'm just showing the basics and where the issue is. And I do believe I've solved that. Next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage.